Hi, I'm Alex Lowe, and this tutorial series is going to focus on making non-photorealistic rendering for games. This tutorial is going to focus on modelling, texture in a watercolour character, and outlines. The software we're using is going to be Blender and Photoshop. So, the first thing we want to do is create something to apply these effects to. Uh, I'll just make something really quick. So, we'll get in the front view and apply a mirror modifier. Then tab into edit mode, or this button down here. Uh, go to edit mode, it should be on object mode to begin with. And then we want to do clippy. And there we go. And then we select that, and then we press X, and we delete the faces in the middle. Because we don't need them. So okay, we've got the cube, uh, we've got the mirror set up. Anything we do gets mirrored over the other side. Uh, an another button you want to press is this one so that you can select behind. Took me a wee while to realise that that's what that was. So next, uh, we want to make a character. So we'll just add in a few edge loops. Should be Control R. There we go. And we select these. Press E to extrude. And then I'm just holding Control and uh, left mouse button clicking to draw a lasso selection and then pressing G to grab and then move the vertexes around and again control R yeah. we'll just get a basic character made yeah just get a general feeling for what we want to make make a slightly cute little character or something. This is by no means a good character at all, it's just for this tutorial. So there I pressed ALT and then clicked on a edge which gives you an edge loop. Just a quick way to select stuff. Yeah, as you can see, this is kind of shaping up now. Uh, another thing I'm going to do, I always usually work with smoothing on. So there we go. Let's get rid of some of the hard edges. Screen recording is really slowing this down. I've not thought about what type of head I'm going to give him yet. I will just make it some kind of big teddy bear or something, I think. Okay, then I'll maybe add some eyes, no, some ears, sorry. Just add a cube. Again, select the bottom ones, delete the faces. Do that. Hopefully these screencast keys down the bottom are useful for you if you're unused to the Blender interface. Right there I'm turning on uh, the snapping tool. It's down there next to the wee magnet. Uh, I usually have it on vertex so that I can constrain and then hold, I think it's control, shift, alt, command. Okay it's not working. Uh, maybe it is. There we go. And then, oh, it's really twitchy. Oh, there we go. So that was control. Okay, so then there we've got a really basic shape. Actually, I might weld these on. This is a, a horrible design choice. Um, delete the faces. Now I should be able to go in and just manually grab every vertex and snap it to another vertex. So yeah, after merging them you can either press Control V 
and then go down to remove doubles or you can just do it in W just the same I think and again remove doubles and that'll remove all those double vertexes okay there we go that looks okay so the next thing we want to do is make it smoother because this you can tell is polygons okay you see we didn't delete for somehow I didn't delete these all the faces in the middle so let me just delete them we'll go into subdivision surface and then we'll go it looks okay so from there we want to start unwrapping I'll just do a really basic unwrap you go over at the UV image editor and then select everything and press U that unwraps it then press new new image and make it a UV grid then down here go to textured view the shortcut for that is alt Z I think yep if you want flat shading you can delete your light now I'm going to do all my seams in this view so then to mark seams you press Control E and then go down to mark seam and do the same again mark seam So now if we press unwrap again, see we've got a lot better. See everything's reasonably okay. There's some weird stuff happening in the middle, but that's because of the uh, mirror modifier. So we apply the subsurf, apply the mirror, and then go in again and press unwrap again. And now you'll notice that everything's pretty nice. But this UV layer doesn't really matter very much the moment. Not for this tutorial anyway. Make sure you get it good when you're actually making a model. You see we'll probably have some problems down the feet area but for the now that's fine. Uh, just make sure we get all your areas a wee bit far apart. Uh, you see as long as they're at least six pixels apart everything should be fine so okay from there we go to the render buttons this is just an extra step uh, sometimes you don't need to do this you go to the render buttons scroll down until it gets to the bake expand the bake thing and change it to ambient occlusion and then click bake now, ambient occlusion is a really good way to get an idea of forms inside a texture. Uh, I usually bake one out for almost every model and then take that into Photoshop and draw over it on top of there. So there's our wee guy. But you'll notice here the actual border around the outside isn't too big and the step that I'm going to do next is take it into Photoshop and blur it and you might get some black overlap there. So what I usually do is crank this up to something like five. That's why I was saying five pixels between. Uh, and then we can watch this happen. It bakes it all out. And then once it's done baking, it expands it uh, from the edge, five pixels. There we go. So we've got a nice margin there now. And we can save the image as Berio. Okay, so now that's done, the next step is to apply a watercolour image. Open image, watercolour. I have this watercolour texture. It doesn't really matter what colour it is at this point. I usually have it grey and then add the colour later, but I can desaturate this. But if you, you realise if you apply that, you just you get these weird seams, these texture seams. Which if you're in a rush is fine, but if you want to make it polished, it's not so good uh, but there's a really nice way to cover this up inside a blender I go to texture paint and then and then you want to go to we've got a texture paint mode and then you want to click on this and go to clone you control left click where you want to clone from and then you just right click where you want to clone it to and you can really quickly cover up seams 
although you do have to keep resampling as it doesn't follow the sample I don't think it might it might have updated it since the last time I used it Okay, I think that's him mostly done. So from there you just go over to the image and go save image and go bare watercolour. So the next thing you want to do is uh, jump over into Photoshop. Okay, so this is the file opened up in Photoshop. And you can see where I've made the adjustments. And from there there's a few things we can do. Uh, one. Just drag the other image over the top and change the blend type to something like soft light. Maybe, maybe. It just adds that little bit more definition. We can duplicate the bottom layer and then go over adjustments, hue saturation. Change this until we get an orangey colour. Then we'll change that to a brown. Turn the brightness down. We turn the saturation down. Get a nice kind of brown colour. I'm also going to uh, lower the ambient occlusion effect there because it's shown off through, through a bit much on the brown. And then we save again. So then we should go over to now and reload the image. So we've got a nice bare. From there you can just do normal texture work. Okay, so we create a new layer in Photoshop. And then we see that this what one's the face? So that one's the face. This one here. So we can go in and add eyes. Pick a dark brown deep red. So we don't want it to go completely black. Uh, go to brush. Zoom in a little. Give them cute little button eyes. So this brush might be a wee bit too feathered at the edges. I want something more hard. Also want to change this to multiply so you get some of the texture shown through, and then lower the opacity. Go drop your nose on them. A couple other things you might want to do is, is just for this example, I'd probably draw some kind of detail in the ear just to get some kind of definition and then as soon as we're trying to make watercolour you make it wobbly same with the eyes, should probably make them a bit more wobbly there we go, turn that off again, save again jump back over and image reload there you go, it's really bad but you get the idea. And the one of the last things we need to do is I I use the same texture map for my outline. Yeah, just because you can get some form of detail. I should have left a bigger space here. But I I make an area of dark like that. Image reload. And you see we've got that up there now. So the next step is to make the outline. Uh, if you're rigging this character you would want to rig it now 
uh, so that the outlines has the same bone groups and stuff. So we duplicate the mesh by pressing Shift D for duplicate. Then we go into edit mode, uh, press Alt S to s scale along the normals, and do it until it's just outside. And you press Control Shift N to relocate the normals inside and the last thing you do is scale everything down and drag it up to the top corner with that brown area that you just made there we go. and save often so now technically here it's not showing anything but if we go into the blender game engine by pressing P you see he's got an outline and that's what we were looking for uh, to get the wobbliness on the outline you create I usually create just a random cube off to the side and go over to this go over to the materials tab create a new material call it text cube or something Then go over to the texture button, uh, create new texture, and then clouds. We name this clouds texture clouds, so that we can reference it. Then we go over to the outline mesh. This one, and add a modifier. So displace, and then the texture we want is clouds. You see, we've got bumpiness already. Uh, and then you just play with these two levels until you get something that's still wobbly but you can still see some of the mesh and then there you go so you can apply that and then merge these two meshes by pressing control J and then Sorry, if there was any overlapping bits, like you see down there, in these areas, uh, you would you would move them until it wasn't intersecting, and you or you couldn't see it. It just takes a bit of getting used to, it, but uh, it can be done. So for that, I'm pressing P to go into the game, and then Escape to get out of the game. Uh, well, I'm on game engine. I'll show you how to do turntables. So we'll go to the game logic editor and go to add always and motion. And we drag a line from here to here and it creates this one in the middle for us. You can manually add that and link them up, but that way it's quicker. Uh, so then it's the blue arrow, which is the Z arrow. So we want it. X, Y, Z. We want to rotate it one always on the Z. So here we have a turntable. And this is the basics for most of the tests that I do. I do animated textures, but I'll do another tutorial on that later. Uh, this one's gone on probably longer than it should have. Uh, so yeah, that's that. I hope you learned something. I hope this was useful. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.